Now we are going to discuss one of the most celebrated mechanisms of mechanism design uh, with transfers and this is known as the VCG mechanism uh, named after the inventors Pickery, Clark and Groves. Uh, so this is, a, this is a mechanism which is also known as the Clark's pivotal mechanism. This belongs to the class of Groves class of mechanisms. So how is it uh, um, uh, belonging to the Groves class? If you look at the uh, this uh, specific HI theta minus i function. Remember that we had all the mechanisms in the class of groves uh, essentially satisfies the allocative efficiency property. That is all of them are actually trying to maximize the sum of the valuation of uh, all the agents by picking their allocation. The only difference in different uh, mechanisms in the groves class is in their payments and that is distinguished by the, uh, the, uh, the choice of the hi theta minus i. The payments were hi theta minus i minus sum over the valuation of all the ages uh, at that efficient allocation of theta i theta minus i uh, and uh, when agent j's type is theta j and th this is summed over all the j which is not equal to i and this will be the payment of agent i. Now uh, based on different hi theta minus i you can get different mechanisms and different payment rules and in the case of the Clark's pivotal rule or the VCG mechanism, this is going to be the max over all the uh, agents valuations, uh, the max over the sum of the valuations of all the agents except agent I. So one, uh, uh, another way of interpreting this is as if a player I is now removed from the whole system. Uh, it is not participating in the mechanism anymore and we are trying to maximize the sum of the valuation of all the agents except agent i and what would have been the, the maximum value that is given by this hi of theta minus i. So therefore the, the payment uh, under the vcg and we are going to denote that as pi vcg of theta i theta minus i is given by this following expression. Uh, we have the maximization with respect to uh, and uh, alternative. Uh, which is maximizing the sum of the valuation except agent i and uh, uh, the subtraction part is the second part of the expression remains the same it is the same efficient allocation so notice that here agent i is actually present and it is uh, choosing that uh, alternative so the mechanism is choosing the uh, alternative or the allocation in presence of agent i but we are just looking at the sum of the valuation of all the agents except agent i. So this difference is essentially the VCG payment. Now one thing we can immediately notice here is that uh, here we are uh, uh, looking at the sum of the valuations um, uh, except agent i in both these cases and in the first expression we are trying to uh, pick the alternative that maximizes uh, the sum of the valuation. Uh, pick the uh, allocation which maximizes the sum of the valuation. So no matter whichever other alternative you pick, in particular even if that is the efficient including agent i, now when we are looking at the agents, uh, all the agents except agent i, this is going to be suboptimal. So this will be the maxima and uh, this expression uh, will, be, uh, will be less than or equal to that value. So we can conclude that this expression, the, the payment here is actually non-negative that is given by this expression here. The payment on the, on the VCG is always going to be non-negative which means that it is no subsidy. Remember the, the, uh, the definition of, uh, of no subsidy that we mentioned in the last module and because it is no subsidy that is uh, it is asking. Uh, so it is not paying any of these agents they can either pay, make some positive payments or they can uh, make zero payments but uh, it is never giving the mechanism is never giving any subsidy to any of these agents uh, this is automatically going to imply that it is also no deficit because if you take the sum of all these payments they are also going to be non-negative now let us come back to the interpretation of this payment rule so what is happening here is that you are looking at the sum of the value of the other agents um, when agent i is not present 
and then subtracting it out from the uh, from the same sum of the players of sum of the value of the other players when agent i is present so this is uh, uh, one way of interpreting this thing and what this mechanism is doing is you can uh, in some sense think of as if the uh, if you are if you are not present then uh, other players were possibly getting some better valuation because of uh, your presence uh, they are getting something less than their uh, 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 what they could have got if agent i was not present so this difference is essentially the marginal damage that this agent i is creating on the other agents and this mechanism is just asking that agent to compensate that so that is one way of uh, actually interpreting uh, if you ever forget the the actual expression this is the way you can actually reconstruct the the payment formula that is the interpretation of the payment uh, part but you can also interpret the utility under this vcg mechanism in which case we are just taking the the sum the valuation of that agent at this uh, efficient allocation and uh, subtract out the the payment then you if you reorganize the terms you can find out that the first term will be the sum of the valuation of all the agents uh, uh, including agent i at that efficient allocation and by, because this is the the social welfare maximizing allocation this term is going to be the maximum uh, social welfare in presence of i and this uh, the second term if you just look at it it is maximizing the utility uh, in the world when agent i is not present so it's the maximum social welfare in absence of agent i so the utility that a, a, each agent gets is the marginal contribution of i to the social welfare let us discuss a few examples to understand the how the um, vcg mechanism works so the first thing is the, the the very old example of single object allocation and here the type is the value of that uh, object for that player if that uh, object gets allocated to a, a, that agent so theta i in that case is nothing but the value of that agent and if that agent does not get this uh, uh, item then its value is zero so that's the setting now let us look at um, uh, the the expression of the vcg payment and try to understand what it means so what will be the uh, the vcg payment uh, for for this kind of a setting so um, as before uh, the allocation uh, because a vcg mechanism is nothing but as uh, a mechanism in the class of groves class of mechanisms the allocation rule is the efficient allocation rule allocatively efficient so the object because this is single and indivisible object it goes to that agent who values it the most so when all the agents are reporting their types whoever has the highest type the uh, the item goes goes to that agent now if we look at the the payment that this particular agent makes uh, we are first looking at if that agent was not present what would have been the uh, the the sum of the value of all the other agents well now if that agent is not present then it will go the object will go to the second highest bidder because that is the maximum bidder max, uh, maximum uh, valued agent in the rest of the game so this sum of the valuation uh, is going to be the uh, the value of the second highest uh, bidder uh, second highest uh, valued uh, agent and when agent i is present if we look at the agent is uh, that agent i is getting these objects so assuming that agent i is the winner uh, that agent is getting the object so uh, the valuation of all the other agents is essentially going to be zero so therefore this term for for that winner is going to be zero and this term is going to be the second highest uh, bit so if we go back to the the previous example uh, where the the there were four agents which we discussed in the previous uh, module uh, they had this uh, these values and their um, uh, their allocation was so the efficient allocation would have been to give the item to this agent one and that agent will pay make the payment the vcg payment will be nine which is the second highest uh, valuation in this case and all the other agents will pay zero because from the same expression we can see that if agent i uh, was uh, not present so suppose now we are considering another agent i which is not the winner uh, so for that if that agent was not present nothing is going to change it's still in this uh, in this summation uh, the uh, the highest uh, valued agent will have that object 
and its valuation will remain the same. So for instance, for the second agent here, uh, this uh, maximization with respect to all the other agents except that agent is going to be 10. And even if when this agent was present, this, uh, this valuation, the sum of the valuation of all the other agents was 10 because uh, when it was present, the, the efficient outcome has actually given the object to this agent. The sum of the valuation of that agent was 10 and everybody else's was 0. So you, you are, uh, uh, both these terms are essentially the same for all the losing uh, bidders, so the losing agents who are not getting that object. So therefore their valuation, their payment under VCG is going to be 0. Now uh, since we have called this mechanism a pivotal mechanism, uh, let us ask this question that what is pivotal in this VCG payment. Let us look at uh, the this example to understand this point. Uh, here uh, on, the, on the rows we have different players A, B and C and uh, suppose there are three alternatives, uh, three allocations that are possible. Uh, either it is a football ground which is going to be built or it can be a library or a museum. So this is the example where the, uh, the city planner or the municipal corporation is deciding whether to build any of this and each of these agents have a certain value associated with each of these outcomes. So for instance player A does not get any value if the football ground is built, it gets a high value if library is built and moderate value if museum is built. For player B something, some, something different happens. So what would be the outcome in this case? So the, you know that uh, the outcome under this VCG mechanism is going to be the efficient allocation. So we are going to take the sum of all, each of these columns, sum of the valuations of each of these columns and whichever maximizes that we'll, we are going to pick that outcome. And uh, it's easy to see that if you pick museum, then the sum of the valuation is maximum, which is 150. Uh, for every, everything else, it is going to be smaller. Now let us look at, so that is the outcome. So the museum is the, uh, uh, the allocation decision. What will be the VCG payment? So in order to find the VCG payment for player A, we'll first have to uh, remove agent A from the system and see what would have been the, the optimal value, or the sum of the, uh, the maximum sum of the value for all the other agents. So if agent uh, A is removed, then we are uh, left with these numbers only. And we see that uh, in that case, uh, building football is the, uh, is the one that maximizes the sum of the values. So 105 will be the sum of these uh, two numbers, the valuation of all the other agents, uh, which is giving, uh, giving this number. And when agent uh, A was present, at that, uh, at that situation, the outcome was museum. And that was giving uh, a valuation sum of the valuation to be 100 for the other two agents. So this difference between these two things is essentially the payment that agent A is supposed to pay under this VCG mechanism. Similarly, if you if you do the uh, uh, similar exercise for player B, so then you, you are going to remove that player B, you, you can see that uh, in that case library would have been the outcome. So 120 would have been the uh, the sum of the values of all the other agents when agent B is not present and when it is present again this will be 50 and 50 so that is the uh, sum of the valuation of all the other agents uh, when agent B is present. So this uh, difference is essentially the payment that it is making. Now when you come back uh, come to this third agent that is agent C here uh, something interesting happens. So you see that whenever agent uh, C was uh, is removed, the outcome uh, does not change. So the maximum value um, is still going to be 100 for the, for the other two players and that is going to be the maximum. Uh, none of the other things can actually uh, overshoot that value. So therefore, the uh, and when agent uh, C is present, then also the outcome is museum. So the sum of the values of the other agents are actually remaining the same. So we are going to say that this agent C is a non-pivotal agent. So what is pivotal? Whenever you remove that agent from the system, the outcome changes. If that happens, then we are going to call that player is a pivotal player. 
because because of its presence the outcome was something different and because of its absence the outcome changes but c is not like that it, it uh, even if it is not there uh, the outcome does not change so uh, this mechanism is essentially not charging any money to to the non pivotal agents so that is why it is called the pivotal mechanism so let us look at another example of combinatorial allocation so we are uh, in this case selling multiple objects so suppose there are two objects one and two so either uh, um, it can be so none of these objects could be sold uh, if uh, it, it uh, only one can be allocated and two can be allocated separately or the bundle of one and two can be allocated uh, together now the agents uh, might not have a kind of a linear valuation that is it is it might not be additive so it's a value for one so let's say uh, when can that happen i mean the the sum of these values uh, the 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 valuation of uh, of the bundle is not exactly equal to the uh, sum of the valuation of those individual items in that bundle uh, this can happen if there are complementary objects so let's say you have a shoe a pair of shoes uh, one is left Uh, left foot uh, of that shoe and the other one is the right foot if you uh, combine them together you have a high value but individually they have very low value so similarly there could be situations where uh, this might not be uh, the the valuation uh, may be smaller than the sum and uh, you can you can think about this this kind of situations that is why it is called the combinatorial valuations agents can have Uh, different values for different combinations of these objects so let us assume that this table is essentially showing that what is the value for agent 1 and 2 for this dif different bundles and very naturally when nothing is allocated the valuation is zero so here uh, and uh, later on we are going to use some uh, shorthand notation because this is an independent private value whenever uh, we have this valuation of a Uh, this is the the uh, the alternative of the allocation a uh, under this uh, type theta i uh, this valuation will sometimes be written sh in a shorthand with this theta i of a which means the same thing is the value of that agent when the allocation a is chosen okay so um, under this setup uh, the efficient allocation you can you can verify this uh, because uh, you can give this item Uh, to agent two and this item to agent one and that will maximize the sum of the valuation of all the agents. Uh, this is the efficient allocation. Let's say that allocation is called the A star allocation. Now, what is uh, what is VCG payment in this case? So, uh, what we have to do to uh, compute the first part is that we'll have to remove agent one. But if agent one is removed, then the best thing that you can do is to give the entire bundle to agent two. which gives you this uh, valuation of 14 and when agent a, a is uh, agent 1 is present what is the valuation that uh, the other agent gets uh, under that allocation under that efficient allocation that is going to be 9 so this difference is essentially the payment that uh, agent 1 is supposed to make and you can uh, see that uh, because it's a, a true valuation for its own allocation is going to be 6 So six minus five is going to be the payoff. So you can also calculate the the payoff separately. So similarly, when uh, you remove a agent two from the system, uh, then the best thing is to give the entire bundle to agent one, and that is going to be the the sum of the valuation of all the other agents uh, minus when it is present. What is the valuation that the uh, that agent one is getting? That is going to be six here. and that difference is essentially the six which is going to be the vcg payment for this uh, agent 2 and similarly you can calculate what is the pay payoff and the, the utility of that player